All right, I want to give you the latest on Nicole out here. It's still a subtropical storm, but we have seen it strengthen on the latest update pressure down the 992 millibars. Now this is progressing uh, right as we are expecting here. Moving off towards the west, it is expected to intensify a bit, possibly coming on shore there in the southeast Florida as a category of one hurricane. Now, uh, of course, we often pay attention to that center line because that's where it's going to be coming on shore, and that's often where the worst of the impacts are. But with this particular storm, you know, the guidance all showing the center of the storm and where it's going to be coming on just south of the Space Coast, but we're going to see a wide range of impacts well ahead of it. What we call uh, this area here is all that convection and just that wind field and in fact a long fetch area that's going to be pushing these waters uh, on shore as well. These gusty conditions are already picking up here on uh, Tuesday evening through Wednesday and even into Thursday. So my point is, uh, of course, we are watching that center of circulation. That's where that strengthening is going to be taking place. But we want to pay well attention to uh, everything taking a place north of that storm center. Take a look at the overall wind field. In fact, you have that interaction with an area of high pressure well towards north, increasing that pressure gradient and all that convection. And thus, let's get to our local warnings. Tropical storm warning is in place. Worst of the weather will be out here on Thursday. That'll be the heaviest rainfall, and I think Thursday's high tides, the morning and the evening one, we are going to be looking at that threat of uh, some coastal flooding, and that's why there is a storm surge warning in place. Remember, that's not only for our local beaches here, where we are going to see those water level, water, water level rises, uh, especially since a lot of the dunes have already been uh, deteriorated following Ian, but also uh, for our bays and inlets, the same John's River as well, which is already running high in each high tide. That water is going to get backed up due to that said fetch area that's continuing to exasperate that situation there. So that's another problem we're going to continue to watch here. For today, though, 77 degrees is our high. We have those passing clouds. It is breezy out near our coastal areas. Winds are coming out of the east at about 30 miles per hour. But the worst of the weather, it's going to be picking up Thursday and in the Friday. Those tides continuing to climb as well as that five plus inches of total rainfall. Take a look at this. Don't focus too much on the center of the storm. That is number one thing in the big three. Despite us being away from that center, we are going to get our impacts here. A tidal flooding uh, three to five feet above normal Thursday and the Friday. And even on Friday, we could see a uh, tornado threat. I think Thursday as well could be seeing that threat there in some of those outer rain bands out ahead of the storm system. This is what I meant by that fetch area. Look at the wind all the way being carried all the way from the east coast of the Carolinas back here towards the first coast starting here on Tuesday into Wednesday and Thursday ahead of our storm well down here towards the south. And that is basically uh, just matching kind of a snow plow pushing snow along and the longer it pushes it, the more snow accumulates. That is the problem we're going to be seeing here and that's why we have that storm surge warning in place despite the fact you know this is a just a tropical storm or a category one uh, a hurricane further well further towards our south we're going to still see those impacts here so tidal flooding here in Duval County four to six inches of total rainfall those winds increasing already today all the way out through our Friday if you're out there in Clay and Putnam near Ian water levels there for you but you are going to be looking at some pretty decent rainfall also Friday we're going to be watching the Black Creek as that starts to drain out. St. John's and the Flagler County getting a little bit of a more of an impact, especially with those rain bands as this comes on shore Wednesday PM through Friday morning. But I think Thursday morning is going to be some of the worst impacts there for you. That tidal flooding three to five feet plus maybe upwards of six feet in spots. Want to keep a close eye on that. Don't forget, we also have a king tide out there. We have that full moon uh, here tonight, so that is going to be contributing to that water level rise and those winds gusting up near 60 miles per hour out near the coastal areas. Even for inland areas, we could see winds up to about 40 and you are also still going to be looking at that tornadic threat there for you. Taking a look at that uh, rainfall accumulation map and mentioned the uh, St. John's Flagler County. That's where you'll probably be seeing the heavier the precipitation. Some of these numbers getting up to 5 to 10 inches. But in look at this uh, even well inland out towards southeastern Georgia. Still going to be seeing some spots about 4 to 5 inches of total rainfall. So I think everybody is going to get in on the precipitation with this one. Unlike what we saw with Ian when we only had half of the viewing area see the rainfall and parts of southeastern Georgia just stay dry. This one's going to be impacting pretty much everybody. And just another look kind of that overall picture of that strong onshore wind, the heavy rainfall, and I can't stress enough, the king tide, which is also combining with that long fetch area, combining with that onshore wind, 
is the reason why we have that threat of that coastal flooding and that storm surge. All right, we're going to keep you posted at firstcoastnews.com as well as here at First Coast News for the latest updates. Don't forget, because of the time change, just this past weekend, the updates come out an hour earlier. So at 1, 4 a.m., 7 a.m., 10 a.m., and then 1, 4, 7, and 10 p.m. in the evening.